In this section, we'll discuss the center of mass, and as we'll find, it's fundamentally related to the conservation of momentum. So we begin again with looking at the momentum expression for a system of two particles. Uh, here's the total momentum of that system. The total momentum, of course, is the sum of momentum for each of the individual particles, which can be rewrite it as uh, m1 r1 dot vector plus m2 r2 dot vector. Now it would be nice if we could express this total momentum of the system as the product of some mass times some velocity, or in other words, the product of some mass times the time derivative of some position. Well, it turns out that that position is going to be the position of the center of mass for our system. First, to find the total mass of the system to be the sum of the masses for all the particles. So the system's mass is just the total mass of this, all the particles. And then we can define a position, capital R, to be 1 over that total mass times the sum of the mass of each particle times its position. Or if we had a system capital N particles, this sum would look like this on this top line, and then we divide it through by the sum of all the particle masses. If, for example, we had a system of two particles, M1 and M2, the position of the center of mass, capital R vector, is going to lie along the line connecting M1 to M2. If we imagine that M2 is greater than M1, so the mass of the second particle is bigger than the mass of the first particle, then the position of the center of mass is going to be slightly weighted uh, toward the position of M2. Another way of thinking about the position of the center of mass is it's the mass-weighted average position of all the particles in the system. So you take the fraction of mass in each particle, multiply that fraction of mass times the position of that particle, and that will give you the position vector for the center of mass for the system. So coming back to the connection uh, with conservation of momentum, if we take a time derivative of the total mass of the system times the position of the center of mass, it's going to be equal to a time derivative of that sum. We can take the time derivative inside the summation since alpha and, and time are independent of one another, and what we find is the time derivative of m times the position of the center of mass is the same as the momentum vector for the whole system. We can take two time derivatives and we get the expression there on the right hand side. We say that that of course is equal to the sum uh, over alpha of each particle's momentum vector, the time derivative of that momentum vector. And when we sum up the time rate of change of all those momentum vectors, we of course get the time derivative of the system's momentum vector. And we know from Newton's third law that the time derivative of that momentum vector is equal to the sum of all external forces and all the particles in the system. This is a really powerful principle. It allows us to treat the motion of a very complicated object by just considering all the forces that are applied to the center of mass for that object. If you watch the video linked to below, you'll see how this simplification provides very powerful leverage on understanding the dynamics of even very complicated systems. Now, of course, not all objects are made up of discrete particles. We might have uh, actually extended objects. Uh, and in that case, if we're going to calculate the center of mass for the extended objects, we'll basically break it up into infinitesimal pieces and then calculate uh, the center of mass for the system by considering the center of mass for each individual little infinitesimal piece. I've linked to a, a video below that shows you how to calculate the center of mass for uh, a pyramid. The book walks through how to calculate the center of mass for a cone. Uh, and basically, you have to take an integral uh, over the volume in order to calculate the center of mass for an extended object. So your summation uh, for discrete particles turns into an integral uh, over an extended volume.